It's the summer of 2007, late June, early July. I was 10 years old, and my grandmother was not doing well. Most of my dad's side of the family lives down in Tennessee, and many of them had come up here to Michigan to be with my grandma in her final days. As it was, we were already a family of four staying in a small house. Now, we had four extra adults, plus a baby. That's nine people living in this small home. Around 1,000 square feet, maybe, one bathroom, and only one full-size bedroom. Sleeping arrangements were not great, and the summer heat made some nights nearly unbearable. Stress levels were high. In an effort to relieve some of that stress, we tried to get out of the house whenever we could. One night, my parents took my brother and I to Best Buy with our aunt, who was one of the extra family members staying with us. At one point, my parents convinced my brother and I to go spend some time with our aunt and walk around the store with her while they did some shopping on their own. When we returned, I'm not sure what tipped me off, but I knew something was up. I glanced behind the counter, and there at the cashier's feet was a black shopping bag, which was clearly something my parents were purchasing that they wanted to keep secret from my brother and I. The head cooperated with the Best Buy salesman. Everything was making sense now. I remembered my parents asking my brother and I about the newest game system just a few days earlier. They just asked us to go walk around without them, and they were hiding something in this black bag. Before I could see inside the bag, they snatched it away. We left the store after paying for everything, and my parents were desperately trying to keep the secret. At some point on the ride home, my brother and I finally got a straight answer. Yes, we were bringing home a PlayStation 3. When we got home, my parents finally told us the kicker. They weren't going to help us set it up. As 10-year-olds with many hours spent playing our PS2 and multiple experience hooking up other tech, we could handle it. Funnily, when we unboxed the second controller they bought with the PS3, we immediately thought something was wrong. There was no cable. The one included with the console came with the cable, but not the second controller. We approached our parents with the sad news. They'd have to return to the store, as the cable for the second controller was apparently sold separately. As our parents were asking us to check around the box and make sure we didn't miss it, we unplugged the cable from the first controller and our jaws dropped. The controllers were wireless. From that moment on, we loved the PS3. We didn't even have any games for it yet. The original model PlayStation 3 was so expensive that my parents originally told us we'd just have to use it as a second PlayStation 2 for now until we could get some PlayStation 3 games. We didn't care. During a time when our home was overcrowded, life was tough, and things looked bleak, we had something to call our own and provide some entertainment. Only a little while later, my dad lost his job, and immediately, 50% of my parents' income was gone. Whereas we weren't rich, we were doing alright as a family before. Now, my parents were budgeting tighter and spending less. Although the PS3 was expensive up front, it ended up being great in the long run. Whereas a brand new video game costs 50 or $60, it was still a better option for the money compared to spending the money on going out to dinner or to the county fair or to an amusement park. The video games provided more entertainment for the money, and as the console got older, the used market grew. A few years later, this console was my baby. I had countless hours spent in various games with so many memories stored on the hard drive. Between myself and my friend Elijah, we spent many nights doing nothing but playing PS3 games. There are two sounds that will forever be in my brain. And this vast expanse of imagination has a name. They call it Little Big Planet. One day, when I pressed the power button, instead of the startup screen, I got a flashing yellow light. I was heartbroken. At the time, this issue was not well known. 
scoured the internet for at-home remedies to try and save my PlayStation, but none worked. Finally, we reached out to Sony and had to send the PS3 in for service. In an attempt to save all my data, I swapped the hard drive with a different one so that I would still have the one with my data on it. I knew most likely Sony would simply send us a different PS3 while they worked on ours and someone else would get ours when they sent theirs in. I knew that the hard drives were locked to our system by the serial number. I knew it was a slim chance that I got back my own console, but I had to try. I tried and failed. The system Sony sent back to us was not the same one we sent in, and thus, the drive I kept wouldn't work without being formatted. At the time, I felt like I had lost my grandmother all over again. I lost all of the memories I had made. I lost all of the hours I spent playing. But after a few days of grieving, I picked up the controller again and made some new memories. Nowadays, we all know what causes the PS3 fat model to get the yellow light of death. Although for a long time people thought it was the capacitors, it was actually discovered recently that the reason was actually the same reason that the Xbox 360 got the red ring of death. The graphics chip just doesn't like to change temperatures frequently, unless it wears down quickly and stops making good contact. To this day, I still have that same PlayStation 3. The boot up footage you saw at the beginning of this video was captured directly from that system. I recorded the footage as I was writing this script. The poor thing has been opened more times than I can count. I clean it often, trying to make sure that the fans have adequate airflow to keep the system cool. Unfortunately, the system can't play any games right now. The Blu-ray drive is dead, which means it fails some system tests when I try to boot a game. When it fails those tests, the game doesn't boot. It just sits there on a black screen and I have to force the system to shut down. I don't know if the drive mechanism itself is bad, or if it's the daughter board attached to it. The Blu-ray drive, like the hard drive, is married to my console, so if it's the mechanism that's bad, I can replace it and transplant the daughter board to the new mechanism. If the board is bad, then I have no choice but to hack my PS3's firmware to keep it alive. And since I have no experience with that, I'm not sure it would be worth it. My friend Brandon used to make fun of me for trying to keep this old girl alive so badly, but I can't help it. She's an old friend, and I'm not ready for her to leave just yet. She's got too many memories of better times. Even though she and I spent some time apart while I started my adult life, she was waiting for me when I got back. Others say, just buy one of the newer models. Yes, they are more reliable, but this one is sentimental. My parents didn't buy us a PS3 Slim in 2010. They bought us an original PS3 in 2007. I have fond memories of playing PS1 and PS2 games on it. I could buy a PlayStation 3 Slim, and technically I would own it, but it wouldn't be my PlayStation 3. I'm going to continue to fix her up until I can't fix her anymore. When that day comes, and it may be soon, I will mourn the loss of a better time in my life. Until then, I will keep her alive the best I can. Thank you.